every time you hit onto the website, you're going to make a call. You got to identify yourself. And by identifying yourself, then are you able to run those calls? Say, for example, to log in, to change your password, to change your profile photo, to search, to do anything. As a result of that, what we're targeting here is to forge our identity pretending that we are someone else and see if that works out. And in order to run that and to make that happen, we'll be targeting something called JSON Web Token. Now, before we get started, remember to put on your thinking hat right here. Let's go ahead and put that on so that we can get started on today's tutorial. So on the left side, you have your best friend, Mr. Hacker Loy, who is going to target a specific website. So on the right, we have a web page. And what happens typically is that the website needs to authenticate the user for authorization. And what happens is that a lot of websites now use application programming interfaces. So anytime you do a search, all right, you run any type of instructions over, you need to target the API and you need to provide some kind of value. And in this case, we have JSON web token that is sent along with the web request in order to demonstrate who you are. So what we'll do as attacker is to one, decode a normal JSON web token, and then two, change up the value so that we'll now be able to disguise ourselves. Instead of Mr. Hacker Lloyd, we can disguise ourselves as say admin and with that, that gives us a lot more power to target all these different type of APIs going into the website, possibly even giving us administrative access to the site. So right in front of us, we're on Kali Linux. So Kali Linux is going to be our ethical hacking operating system to help us identify the vulnerabilities, the openings on the website for us to target. And there's a few interesting things as you're running through the website, or you could be searching for things. So you could be entering, say, test or whatever. It could be literally anything. You click onto the account, you click login, and you could enter your login details. So in this case, I have already created an account. So let's go ahead and enter that hacker loy at loyalyoungyoung.com and I can enter my password which is a very secure password and if you don't know what a password is you can just click on a show password there you go I told you you can't trust me go ahead and click login on that and you can see right here on the top right corner, we have account of HackerLoy at LoyLiangYoung.com. And we'll be navigating across different parts of the website. So say, for example, I go to customer feedback and I could see all the different details here. I could go over into About Us and all this different data. So again, I can go over into more tools, web developer tools, again, search for ad, hit enter on that and see what we get. And perhaps we can find some possible information for us to use as part of launching the attack. So this is something we can do as part of listing down and enumerating all these different users and lists so that we can go after and so say here, right here, you can see the following. We have something juice-sh.op. So in this case, I love this shop. Best products in town, highly recommended. And we have, of course, asterisk, 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 I N. So what could this be? Could it be? admin all right so admin could be a choice for us and what we can do now is we can go ahead and list that now so here i can go ahead and enter say admin add juice all right shop okay dot op all right so here in this case we have those details so go ahead and search some more and see whether we are able to find more possible details so again we have three asterisks so we're not sure but we know that the three characters there so again we can enter the information here so that we can use this information later on as part of speeding up the way that we are launching the attacks against the target server all right so let's go ahead and search for the next one once again we have something der at juice-sh.op so once again i'm not sure what's the answer for it but let's go ahead and enter it first anyway so later on when we're launching our attacks it's going to be much more narrow next up what we can do here is to intercept and understand how requests are getting sent over into the target site so that's something we need to do in order to better understand how perhaps some of this authentication authorization process is being run on the target website so that we can try to change those values a little and see how the website responds to those changed values. So here I've turned on Burp Suite, which is going to be our interceptor. And what I can do now is I can go back to the website, go to the top right corner on the Foxy Proxy, click onto Burp Suite. Jump back over to Burp Suite and we can see right here a proxy intercept is on. And what I can do now is there's a couple of things. I can click say account, I click login. All right, so we have the interception. I can click forward. All right, and once we're in here, I can try to log in. So let's say I enter the following information again, and I follow by the password, I click login. So once I click login, I can see some details right here, okay? I click forward, 
All right, and we can see all these other details. I click forward again, forward again, and all this data. So I can go back to HTTP history, and we can see several interesting information here. Okay, so we have the following of get user, all right, who am I? And in this case, if you see the following details, we can see, all right, we have referral, we have cookie, I have again, who am I? I can see continue code, I can click user, login, and we can see welcome banner and all this different data. All right, so as we are surfing through the site, we're seeing all this different type of data. All right, so let's go ahead and click .com for this, all right, and go ahead and enter login one more time, okay, and go ahead and intercept and forward all these different details. All right, and we can see some other details here. We have get rest basket and we have an important detail which is authorization bearer and if i scroll down further we also have another piece of information which is token followed by the token that is inside here okay so i can go ahead and click forward again we are seeing more details of authorization bearer all right followed by the token right at the end all right so all this are important information because it demonstrates that whenever we do a say get rest user who am i we are telling them who we are in order for the call to determine whether they should respond with those details. So let's go ahead and forward that. So you can see lots of information here, slash API quantities, right, and all this different data. So you can go to HTTP history, you can look over here, API quantities, all right, so we have the authorization barrier token, all these different details. Okay, and what we can do now, whether it is rest slash user, who am I, or whether it is API quantities, what we want to do here is to be able to change up the value a little and see what we get. So first, we want to decode it, and two, we want to change the value and see how a website responds for us. So I can do a right click, and I can send it to something like, say, repeater. And once you send it over to repeater, we got some details here. So we got the authorization, and you can see right here, based on the value, all right, based on how a lot of sites may be trying to check upon a user is under the authorization bearer, all right? So here, what we can do now is I can go ahead and try to decode this. So what we can do now is go over to jwt.io and jwt.io, though we have a debugger. All right, and what we can see here is the structure of the JSON web token. So you can see the components on the right. So first you have the header, which has the algorithm and the type. So in this case, we can see, for example, JSON web token. And next up, we have the payload. So payloads are data within the JSON web token. So it could be, in this case, a name. And of course, in some instances, that could even be password. There could be many sensitive data within the payload. And finally, you got a verify signature, which you can use depending on the type of algorithm that's in use. What you can do now is go ahead and paste the encoded value right here on the left. And on the right side, it will show you the information here. So we got the header, like the type, all right, the algorithm. And now we got a payload information right here. So we got a username, the ID, the email address, password information, which is really interesting. Let's take a deeper dive on that. And of course, we got the role, the deluxe token, and all of those data, all right? So all this important information, and right at the end, we have a verified signature, all right? So in this case, we have RSA SHA-256. So what we want to do here now is perhaps let's take a look at the password view, which is quite interesting because this could be used possibly for hijacking. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now what we'll do is go ahead and double-click on this, copy it, Go to a website saying like md5online.org and go to md5-decrypt.html. And once you're in here, what you can do is go ahead and paste that value, click decrypt, and let's take a look at the password. And again, if I scroll down further, you can see right here, found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the password that we use. And oh yes, if you want me to validate your password for you, go ahead and enter your password in the comment section. I'll do it for free. And this is not what we are trying to achieve here today. What we are trying to achieve here today is to think about what can we do to change up the value a little bit so that we can forge someone's identity. We can use someone else's identity to do something, all right, against the target website. So that's what you're trying to aim for here. So what I can do now is go ahead and say change up, say for example, the algorithm. Can I change the algorithm to say none? And how would the web server respond? So what I can do is I can copy the value over here, all right, and I go over to Burp Suite. I can go to something like the decoder tab. I paste it over here, and I will put this as encode, or right, in this case, as base64. And I can go ahead and copy the value here, throw in to say something like a text editor, all right, and then followed by dot. And now what we want to do next is go back over here into the payload, all right? And in this case, perhaps I'm aiming for a specific ID, all right? And I do not care about the username. 
And in this case, perhaps I want to change up the email to say admin at juiceshop.op. All right, so this is the information that we got. And typically, the very first user in a lot of websites with the idea of one is going to be the administrator. So that's what we are targeting. You know, with all these other details, let's go ahead and copy all this information right here and go ahead and code it. And what we can do now is go over to the website like base64encode.org, paste the value right here and go ahead and click encode right at the bottom. And once you're done with that, scroll down a little and you'll be able to see the value. And we want to copy this value, all right, over into our crafted payload. So here, go ahead and paste that in. And now we have it enter the last stock. And in this case, if you were to go back over into JSON Web Token, right at the bottom, we have the verify signature. We do not need this anymore because the algorithm is none. So you can see right here, we are back to Burp Suite, and this is the original request. So if I go ahead and send this over to the target website, we get the following response of ID22, hackerloy at loylangyang.com, and all these different details, so 200 okay. So now what if we change this up a little bit? I go back to our text editor, I copy the information right here, and I go back to Burp Suite, and now what we're doing is to change up the information in authorization. So let's go ahead and change that up, paste it over, all right, and we can go all the way to the end, all right, and then we have the following token. Okay, so I can again paste this over. All right, and then let's see what we get. Okay, and of course, in this case, let's change up the X user email too, just to make sure that we have consistency. Admin at juice dash sh dot op. Go ahead and click send, and we can see right here we have 200. Okay. And you can see right at the bottom, we get the following response, ID1 admin at juice shop. Now jump back over to the website and we want to hijack the account by changing the password. So I go to the top right corner of our account, I go to privacy and security, I click on the change password. And right here, I'm going to go to the top right corner, Foxy Proxy, click onto Burp Suite. So what I can do now is go ahead and enter the current password, okay, and followed by the new password. So in this case, I'll put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, doesn't matter. And once you're ready, go ahead and click change. And here we have the interception. I can send a right click to repeater. And what we want to do now is to replace the bearer token as well as the cookie value that we have here on the token. So let's go ahead and do just that. So copy the whole chunk of value right here, go back to Burp Suite. And what we can do now is paste it over onto the authorization bearer token. Likewise, for the token on the cookie, paste it over. And in three, two, one, click send. And you can see right here, we got a following result. All right, we have username, admin. It means it's success. We have HTTP 200 OK. So what I can do here now is I can go back over to the website. I can turn on Foxy Proxy. I click to account. I click log out. I click account again. I click login. And now in this case, I can enter admin, add juice shop, followed by the password 1234567 So the reality is I don't even need to password it. I click login and boom, look at the top right corner. We are in. We have hijacked it into the account. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? And like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't get hacked.